Hey, my foodie family, how are you? Thanks for stopping by the channel. Always happy to see you here. In the summertime, you might be grilling some sausages and invariably there's one or two or three sausages left over. And this is what I do with mine. I'm going to make an Italian sausage orzo pilaf. Sounds complicated, but it's really quite simple. In a deep skillet, I've added a couple of tablespoons of oil and we're going to bring that up to temperature and saute some vegetables. And if you just heard that sound, that's my microwave heating up some leftovers. <laughs> so to the skillet, I've added one onion, one stalk of celery, and one carrot that I've diced pretty small. Because we're making a pilaf, we usually start with vegetables and sauteing them and getting them tender crisp, we don't want them mushy. It's very colorful. The orzo that I'm going to use is um, something new that I found. It's a vegetable orzo made with lentils and all kinds of good stuff. We're seasoning the vegetables with garlic powder or granulated garlic, some salt and pepper. These vegetables themselves don't always have a lot of flavor, so we need to punch it up a bit. Especially since we're making orzo, it's kind of plain like rice, so you want it to taste really good. Give it a stir and make sure all the vegetables are coated with oil and everything is sizzling nicely. If you guys ever made pilafs with rice, you can change the rice and use barley or other grains. This happens to be an orzo made with red lentils, chickpeas, and green peas. So it's a tricolor. I'm using one package. Don't they look gorgeous? I've never seen this product before. Um, it's new to me, but I'm going to cook it just as if it were rice. You want to make sure that the orzo is all covered in the rice as well and that it starts sauteing. You want everything to get beautifully light brown. You want to toast the orzo so that it takes up all the liquid. This is very much an orzo kind of, I'm sorry, a pilaf recipe. Or you might want to say it's a, um, I forget the name of it. It'll come to me by the end of the video, hopefully. I've added about a cup of chicken stock. You can use vegetable stock, you can use water, you can use some dry white wine mixed in there. All would be good. The orzo is going to absorb all the liquid until it's perfectly cooked. If it gets too dry before the orzo is tender enough, you can certainly add a little bit more liquid. You can see here, this is after it's cooked out. All the orzo has absorbed most of the moisture and now I'm adding two to three Italian sausages that I have left over. I've cut them on a bias so that they look interesting and I've mixed them in with the orzo mixture. The word I was looking for was risotto. It's a risotto method or it's a pilaf method, very similar and not that difficult. Doesn't this look good? For a leftover recipe, this is absolutely delicious. I'm adding a cup of green peas. They can be frozen, they can be fresh, they can be canned. We're at the end of the cooking cycle here, so it doesn't need much. We just wanna make sure that the, I'm using frozen peas, so we wanna make sure that the peas kind of thaw out and um, aren't crunchy when you eat them. <laughs> If you're using fresh or canned, they'll cook quick as well. Here's the finished dish. Doesn't look yummy as a leftover recipe. I'm going to add just a bit of grated cheese. I happen to have Romano here today, but you can use Parmesan, Grana Padana, whatever you have in your fridge. It's all yummy. A little bit of cheese, sorry, the little bit of cheese enhances the kind of risotto kind of 
flavor to this recipe. It looks yummy. It tasted yummy. You must try it and make it someday. If you like the recipe, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Love to have you here with me. Thanks for stopping by for another sausage recipe that warms your soul. We'll see you next time.